Last Saturday in Sin City was a showdown between one trying to get their first career win and another trying to keep their playoff hopes alive. In the end, it was AJ Allmendinger who was able to hold off the pack and earn a spot in the championship four for the NASCAR Xfinity Series in Phoenix. Now, the weight is off his shoulders and is more applied to the remaining seven drivers and will get as close to the wall as possible here at a driver's favorite track to find a way to make it to the promised land, that being a golden ticket to Phoenix. Welcome to the second race of the round of eight in the NASCAR Xfinity Series playoffs. It's the Homestead 300, live from Homestead Miami Speedway here in Homestead, Florida. Again, gorgeous weather here in the late afternoon is going to be, but also very hot. Low 80s, 1% chance of rain, but look at that wind as picked up from the morning. East northeast through the racetrack at 12 miles an hour, but wind gusts as high as 24 miles an hour is going to be hot, slick, and windy here in South Florida. Welcome back to episode of MBK Race Day, part two of our double header. My name is Jed. Hope we're having a wonderful Saturday again. Like I said, uh, we will be doing a double header. I posted the Cries from Truck Series just a little bit ago. Make sure you check that out and then come back here. But if you have already watched that, thank you for keeping up to date with all these videos. And uh, yeah, let's not waste any time and jump right into it. Let's take a look at our playoff grid. Like I mentioned last Saturday at Las Vegas, it was AJ Allmendinger that was able to hold off Ryan Seek to win at that race. And most importantly, lock himself into the championship four at Phoenix in two weeks' time. Justin Allgaier in second place at plus 32. Then a big drop to Cole Custer at plus 16. Chandler Smith holds the final spot, eight points ahead of Austin Hill. His teammate, rookie Jesse Love, in six minus 13. Sam Mayer minus 23. And Sammy Smith now minus 53 points below the cut line. Now, qualifying took place yesterday, and it was Chandler Smith, fourth in the playoff grid for his sixth career Xfinity Series poll, his first in 2024, and the first poll at an intermediate track for him since Vegas back in March of 2023, completing it with a speed of 163.305 miles per hour. Now here's a look at the starting lineup for the 2024 Homestead 300 here at Homestead Miami Speedway. On the front row is Chandler Smith and his teammate Sheldon Creed in the 18 car. Row 2 is another driver from Joe Gibbs Racing, Eric Amarola still fighting in the owner standings. Alongside him is Cole Custer in the double zero car. Row 3 has Justin Allgaier and AJ Allmendinger in the 16 and the 17. Parker Kligerman in this final Miami race here starting alongside Riley Herbst in the 98 car with Sam Mayer, who won here in the past, so alongside his teammate Sammy Smith rounding out the top 10. Parker Westloff and William Zawalich uh, starting in row six. Zawalich is doing double duty, like I mentioned at the Craftsman Truck Series pre-race show. Row seven, another driver doing double duty is Connor Zillich driving the number 88 Junior Motorsports car alongside with him, his rookie Jesse Love, again competing in the playoffs. Row eight, Jeb Burns starting in 15th place once again this weekend, so alongside him is Austin Hill, the lowest of the playoff drivers here starting in 16th. Row nine, has Ryan Sieg who came oh so close to winning at Vegas last week. Tough, tough break for him. Starting alongside him is Anthony Alfredo in the five car and round at the top 20 is Brennan Poole and Brandon Jones in the nine car. Row 11 has Kyle Weatherman and Ryan Truex. Row 12 is Jeremy Clements and Josh Williams. Row 13 is row of rookies Shane Van Gisbergen in the 97 car. So alongside him is Leyland Honeyman in the 42 car. Row 14, Kyle Sieg and Brad Perez back in the Xfinity Series. South Florida man in the 07 ride for him. And round the top 30 is Dawson Cram and Dylan Lupton. Here's a look at the final four rows. Ryan Ellis and Mason Maggio. Nick Leitz and Austin Green. Blaine Perkins. Row 18, Blaine Perkins and Thomas Annunziata. And rounding out the 38 car field is Armani Williams and Matt Benedetto. He had issues during practice and was not able to post a qualifying time. Here's a look at the odds to win. The opening odds to win here at Homestead. Cole Custer at plus 350, who is a former winner here, so no surprise to see him up there at the top. Eric Amarola at plus 500. Creed at 650. And Almendinger and Mayer tied at 800. And a three-way between Allgaier, Zillich, and Smith at plus 1,000. Herbs at 1,200. And then Sammy Smith, Jesse Love, and teammate Austin Hill sitting at 1,800. So Wallach at 2,200 as well as Ryan Truex. Parker Kligerman and Brandon Jones at 2,500. Ryan Sieg at 3,000. He could be an underdog here today. So opening us to be at 3,000 is quite a shock to see. Gisbergen at 13,000. Then a big, big drop. Josh Williams at 20,000. And Parker Retzlaff just for the hell of it at 25,000. All right, so what can we expect here at Homestead today? Well, sir, first start off with the playoff drivers I mentioned. Cole Custer, who is starting off or opening up with the best odds. He's a former winner here at Homestead. This type of racetrack really does favor his type of driving style. Starting in the fourth position, so you know he's going to be, I think, a real big factor here today. Is second in the playoff grid, but definitely wants to win here to be able to 
make it certain that he will race for a championship at Phoenix in two weeks' time. Another driver is Chandler Smith. Now, I had him winning last Sunday at Vegas, or last Saturday, I should say. Didn't go out that way, but he still has a good record on the mile and a half racetrack, so he's another driver that I would keep an eye on. But he did finish, I should say finish, but he was very slow in the 10-lap averages, uh, way down below the practice charts compared to the other playoff drivers. So that's something just to keep an eye on, even though he is starting on the pole. We'll see that if he does have a car that is capable of winning or if it's like if he gets back in dirty air back in the traffic he won't be able to recover that's something just to keep an eye on because that 81 car i'm not quite confident on i'm just a bit confused on by the speed if it makes sense another driver to watch out for even though he's not in the driver playoff of uh, picture he is in the owner points and that's eric amarola fastest in the five and 10 lap averages second fastest in the 15 lap averages starting in third place he won at kansas earlier a couple weeks ago so we know how good he is on these mile and a half racetracks we know how good he can be just because he's not in the driver's playoff grid he is still racing for those owner points you know he's going to be a factor in this race today, but I feel like he has the best odds in my opinion because that 28, that 20 car I should say this weekend has been stout on the money, I think. And with Eric Ambrola as the driver behind the wheel, he's going to put up a fight against these Xfinity Series regulars. And I feel like he would, he probably has the best chance of winning here today, to be honest. Even though Custer opens up as the best odds. I have Amarola as really the best shot at winning. I'm even throwing in Ryan Sieg. Now, Ryan Sieg was fourth fastest in the 10 and 50 lap averages. And with a track like Homestead, it's not exactly like Texas and Vegas, but it's not really like Texas, but Vegas, they last repaved, I think, in 2007. Homestead was last repaved back in 2003. So, bit kind of the same in terms of the track ages. And with how good Sieg ran at Vegas last Sunday or last Saturday, I would not be surprised at all if I see Sieg once again be a factor here today. I don't know if they're bringing the car that they ran with that Vegas last Saturday, but regardless, I feel like that 28 car, where he is starting right now at the moment, is not where he's going to finish. I think he's going to be a very strong contender and will try and play playoff spoiler once again. And there are other drivers like Connor Zilich. Him back in the Xfinity Series, very curious to see how he does here today. Riley Herbs won at Vegas last year. He has been very fast here at practice this weekend, so he, I think, has a real good shot at winning. The Xfinity Series has a lot of different drivers, different characters that have real good shots at winning. But we take a look at the playoff drivers. I really only got Allgaier Custer. I don't even see that much AJ Allmendinger, even though he's starting six today. When you look at his mile and a half program, I don't feel like him, and especially this weekend... I don't see him just being up there and continuing for the win, especially since he is already locked into it. I don't think he's just going to be a factor. But when I look at some other drivers, I look at Sam Mayer starting in ninth place. He's a former winner here at home set, and he desperately needs the points, as well as his teammate starting alongside him, Sammy Smith, almost a full race behind at minus 53. Smith needs to win. I mean, that A card just has to win. He, I don't think, can make up the points to do it. He has to win. I would even argue that the 2 and the 21 car, those two RCR cars, I am not confident in their speed this weekend. I am not confident that they're going to make up the ground necessary to get back into the championship four title picture. I feel like those three drivers, the two, the 21, and the eight car, they got to win just because I don't think they can get there on speed. Sam Mayer, with how good he is at Homestead, I feel like he can make up the points for it. I think he's only a minus 23 below the cut line. I think he can make up the points for it, but it's going to be tough. But I think he's the only one of the four drivers below the cut line that has the speed to be able to make up that lost ground. But if you want to ask for my pick to win, I'm a bit conflicted. I'm conflicted between two drivers, Cole Custer and Eric Amarola. But I'm going to side with Eric Amarola. I feel like he's going to win here today. Yes, he finished 13th the last time we were at a mile and a half last Saturday at Vegas. But with how good he has been this weekend and him winning at Kansas a couple weeks before that, beating Cole Custer... Uh, I feel like that 20 car is going to go to victory lane. So I have Eric Amarola taking the checkered flag here at Homestead. But that is it for this episode of MDK Race Day Xfinity Series Edition. Let me know what you think is going to happen in the comment section down below. As always, make sure you come back here immediately following the Xfinity Series race, recapping everything that happened in that one. And of course, tune back in on Sunday morning as we preview the NASCAR Cup Series in their second race of the round of eight at home, Sam Miami Speedway. So make sure you tune in for that. But until next time, my name is Jeff from MDK. Thank you so much for watching. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the NASCAR Xfinity Series from home, Sam Miami Speedway. We'll see you here later tonight for an episode recapping it all on MDK.